Well, hey guys, if you are new here, I'm a board certified dermatologist. And in this video, we're gonna be talking all about extreme dry skin. Now on my channel, you're gonna find a lot of videos about dry skin, tips for managing it, the best products for dry skin, the best sunscreens for dry skin. But I know a lot of you guys out there deal with an extreme form of dry skin known as ichthyosis vulgaris. It's actually a pretty common skin condition affecting about one in 250 people. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over the signs of of ichthyosis vulgaris, what to look out for. And importantly, I'm gonna be giving you tips, tricks, and strategies for managing this condition, going over the best ingredients and the best skincare products. The vast majority of cases of ichthyosis vulgaris are hereditary. There's a good chance that somebody in your family has this or a related condition called eczema or atopic dermatitis. Now the top layer of your skin, the epidermis, is comprised of a cell type called the keratinocyte. Those keratinocytes, they mature throughout the epidermis to become who they're supposed to be, corneocytes, which are basically part of the barrier that protects you from the outside world. And a key component to the execution of that process is something called prophylaxis, and that gets degraded into something called filaggrin, which is important not only for the formation of the barrier, but it's also really important for moisture retention. It gets degraded into amino acids that hold water in the skin. Now, people with ichthyosis vulgaris have a mutation in the gene for filaggrin. As a result, they have increased transepidermal water loss. Their skin does not hold on to water well at all. And they also are more prone to inflammatory responses when they come in contact with irritants from their environment or allergens. You have a defect in the normal turnover of keratinocytes. They get retained. And that is what leads to dry, scaly skin. How do you know you have ichthyosis vulgaris? Well, it typically presents in early childhood or infancy with diffuse, fine, white scales on the lower legs and the arms. In early childhood and infancy, you can have some dry skin on like the forehead and the cheeks, but as we start making more oils on our face, that tends to improve. And a lot of people with ichthyosis vulgaris will also develop dry, flaky skin on the scalp. But here's one of the hallmark characteristics of ichthyosis vulgaris, something that you probably never thought to look out for, but is a clue that that is what is going on. And it's actually on the palms of your hands. Increased linearity, meaning more lines on your palms. You know, if you've ever been to like a soothsayer palm reader, um, you know, they could go to town with you because you have so many lines. It's called hyperlinear palms. And because of the um, corneocyte retention, you can have roughness on the hands. Sometimes they may even look dirty. Now with dry skin and a predilection for increased transepidermal water loss comes bouts of itch. So it's not uncommon for folks with ichthyosis vulgaris to have itchy skin. Interestingly enough, folks with ichthyosis vulgaris tend to have longer eyelashes. So those are the signs of ichthyosis vulgaris. And if you have this condition, there is a very good chance that someone in your family has it because it is hereditary in the vast majority of cases or someone in your family has a related condition to ichthyosis vulgaris, like eczema, keratosis pilaris, seasonal allergies, or asthma. You yourself may have some of these associated conditions like asthma or seasonal allergies. It's not uncommon for folks to have a couple of these issues. Now, if you have ichthyosis vulgaris, what is your outlook like in life? I mean, what happens? Good news, for the vast majority of people, the outlook is actually pretty good. It, believe it or not, tends to improve as you get into adulthood, but it is a genetic condition. There's no cure for it. It is something that you likely will have to manage to some extent for the rest of your life. It tends to get better in the summer and worse in the winter as the humidity drops. Because of that filaggrin mutation, there is a defect in barrier function. And for that reason, you are at an increased risk for skin infections. Now, the, now managing this condition for most people is going to be something you're going to have to do to some extent on an ongoing basis for life. But it may be something you really only have to amp up in the drier winter months, and then you can kind of do something a little bit more laid back in the summer months. It, it's gonna vary from person to person. What can you do if you have ichthyosis vulgaris to make it better. Uh, taking a soak in a lukewarm bath can help because it will improve the moisture content in that top layer of the skin. And by improving the moisture content, you can help facilitate the shedding of those retained corneocytes, 
allowing the flakes to, to calm down. Using a washcloth after you have soaked in a circular fashion to help gently exfoliate those corneocytes is also gonna help smooth out the surface of the skin and improve barrier function. Hydration of the stratum corneum promotes desquamation or shedding of those corneocytes by activating certain enzymes in the skin that help with shedding. And when you hydrate the stratum corneum by soaking in a tub, it also improves the pliability of the skin and just mechanically helps with shedding of those retained corneocytes. So something as simple as taking a soak in a bath really can help a lot. While the skin is still damp, apply a moisturizer. And later on, I'm going to tell you some good ingredients to look for in moisturizers for ichthyosis vulgaris. Now, when we're talking about bathing, some things that you need to be mindful of. Don't bathe in extremely hot water because that can really dry out your skin even further and avoid the use of soaps and cleansers unnecessarily. And by unnecessarily, I mean pretty much just focus that anywhere where you have uh, visibly soiled skin and in the skin folds where it's moister. But you, in all likelihood, should not really be needing to use any kind of soap or body wash on your legs, on your arms. That's only going to make the ichthyosis vulgaris worse because you're gonna be removing what, you know, some of your natural lipids that are trying to help you out and improving barrier function. And that's really going, only going to worsen the dryness. If you have associated keratosis pilaris, which a lot of people with ichthyosis vulgaris do, using hot water or soaps can further worsen that as well. Folks with ichthyosis vulgaris, they're gonna need to use an ointment many times on the skin. And by ointment, I mean something that's really, really occlusive and greasy, like petrolatum, otherwise known commonly as Vaseline or Aquaphor or CeraVe healing ointment. They need that because they have increased water loss from the skin. And by using an ointment, it helps reduce that, keeping water in the skin and improving skin hydration, which is the underlying issue in ichthyosis vulgaris. You don't retain moisture well in the skin. I also suggest running a humidifier in the bedroom at night to improve the ambient humidity, and that's going to help minimize uh, loss of water from your skin. Everybody's skin loses more water when we sleep at night. And so for those of you with ichthyosis vulgaris, a humidifier can really go a long way. Now, after you apply an ointment or a moisturizer to the skin, if you are really dealing with, you know, pretty intense flares of the ichthyosis vulgaris, I also suggest putting on some cotton pajamas immediately after. It's called the soak and smear technique. You soak in a tub, you smear on something greasy, and then you put on you know, a pair of pajamas over it to really trap that ointment up close to the skin and really help seal in hydration. What are some ingredients to look for to help you out if you have ichthyosis vulgaris? Alpha hydroxy acids, glycolic acid and lactic acid in moisturizers can help you out tremendously because they dissolve the glue between those corneocytes and really allow, you know, they facilitate shedding and desquamation of the corneocyte. And they're also effective for hydrating. They are humectants. So remember with ichthyosis vulgaris, that mutation in filaggrin, part of filaggrin's function is as a, you know, breaking down into a humectant to hold water in your skin. You don't have that. So you need a little, a little help from like a hydroxy acid, for example. Alpha hydroxy acids, they work by dissolving the glue between st sticky skin cells. They work lower down in the, the stratum corneum. So they, they penetrate pretty deeply to really help break that up for you. When we're talking about alpha hydroxy acids, I mentioned glycolic and lactic acid. Now lactic acid at 12% strength applied to the skin twice daily has been shown to be more effective for people with ichthyosis vulgaris than just applying a cream twice a day. Now a product that has 12% lactic acid in it is amlactin. You can buy it at Costco. Eucerin makes a variety of alpha hydroxy acid lotions as well that you could look for. Now, if you use these lotions, you do also wanna be mindful of your sun exposure because they can increase the risk of a sunburn, but they really can help out a lot with not only moisture retention, but in helping to shed those stuck on corneocytes. Salicylic acid is a keratolytic ingredient that you can find in moisturizers like the CeraVe SA cream or the CeraVe SA lotion that helps with corneocyte disaggregation in the upper portion of the stratum corneum, whereas alpha hydroxy acids like lactic acid help with corneocyte disaggregation in lower levels of the stratum corneum. And last but not least, urea. Over-the-counter moisturizers with urea can be a game changer for folks with, 
with ichthyosis vulgaris because urea is both a humectant as well as a keratolytic. So it's going to help with improving the moisture content in the skin, and it's also going to help with shedding of those adherent corneocytes. So in 2021, Cetaphil launched their Rough and Bumpy Daily Smoothing Moisturizer with 20% urea. This would be a great one if you have ichthyosis vulgaris because that urea can help improve hydration and really improve barrier function. Now it can be, at this strength, it can be pretty irritating. So you may just wanna try a little spot test on your lower leg. Another ingredient that may be beneficial for you if you have ichthyosis vulgaris is a ceramide containing moisturizer. Ceramides, they're part of our skin's lipids and they're part of you know good barrier function, but in dry skin conditions, they can become deficient. And applying them topically in a cream or lotion can help improve barrier function. And you know, Eucerin, for example, makes moisturizers that have like urea and or an alpha hydroxy acid plus ceramide. I'll link some of those down below. That, that Those would be another good option. Try to not feel overwhelmed by all of these different ingredients I'm mentioning. Again, some of these moisturizers that I've talked about, they have multiple ingredients in them that will help you out. It's not so important to have all of the ingredients. It's more important to stay consistent using the moisturizer twice a day to get a hold of the dry skin condition as well as avoiding things that are drying. And by that, I mean using body wash or soap on your arms and legs, uh, taking long, hot showers, you know, that humidifier in the bedroom can really help as well. Topical retinoids like tazeratine or tretinoin can help with ichthyosis vulgaris because they basically stimulate cell turnover, division, they suppress keratin synthesis, and ultimately they really can improve barrier function. Unfortunately, they cause a lot of peeling and dryness in the beginning of using one, so a lot of people just don't tolerate them, but that certainly is an option as well. And rarely, uh, systemic retinoids can be given to treat this condition. And by systemic, I mean a pill that you take by mouth. And there are two that can be used to treat ichthyosis vulgaris. One is isotretinoin, it's an acne medication. Um, and the other is uh, acetretin or psoriatin. It's given to people who have psoriasis. Um, it's not, these two options, you know, they're not commonly used because there are risks associated with these medications and typically topicals are, you know, going to be the first line treatment. But for really, really, really stubborn cases, it's something that might be considered. Everything that I've told you up to this point, it has to do with the vast majority of cases of ichthyosis vulgaris being hereditary. In rare cases, however, you can develop this condition um, as an adult and it not be hereditary. In those cases, it's called acquired ichthyosis vulgaris and it's typically secondary to an underlying medical problem. So all of a sudden you're an adult and for the first time ever you've got fish scale type dry skin on your lower legs, what the heck? Well, it can be a sign of an underlying medical problem. Uh, some cancers actually present this way, not to alarm anybody. Uh, multiple myeloma, certain leukemias. It can be secondary to uh, inflammatory conditions like lupus, sarcoidosis, and very, very rarely it can be secondary to a medication that you might be taking. It also can be seen in cases of malnutrition. It's not always genetic, but in the vast majority of cases, it is genetic, it is hereditary. People with eczema, otherwise known as atopic dermatitis, also can have mutations in that gene filaggrin as you know part of their disease. And so there's some overlap between ichthyosis vulgaris and eczema. And you know, both of these conditions often have asthma or seasonal allergies or family history of any one of these is, is quite common. So let me know in the comments if you have this condition or know someone who does, or hopefully this was helpful to you all. Um, on the end slate, I'm going to put my video on the best moisturizers for winter. So if you are dealing with dry skin, hopefully that is helpful. And in the description box, I'm going to list all of the moisturizers that I mentioned in today's video. But if you like this, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.